All right, this is Dr. Laz coming at you from MIA in the 305. Yeah, AKA Lazman Haze in beautiful Miami. What can I tell you? There are choices, okay? There are alternatives <laughs> where to live, where to park yourself, but whatever, wherever you find yourself, eh, that's where you're meant to be. All right, like the Fab Four saying, no place you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. So if you're up in the snow, enjoy it. Make the best of it. Look outside, see all that beautiful white snow. Yeah, enjoy it. Go out there, make snowman. You're allowed to say snowman anymore, probably snow person. Uh, but anyhow, get out and enjoy. Ice skate, snow, ski, do something so you're not a victim of NDD, nature deficit disorder. That's bad for the soul. You gotta get out in nature, folks. You got to get out in nature. Yeah, it's good for the soul. It's good for the body. It's good for everything. It's good for your psyche, your emotional well-being, your intellectual, your everything, all components, okay? Every facet of your being. So get on outside. So I wanted to just speak with you about, you know, in this uh, weekly tar portion, oh, always, people always want to know who is Jethro Tull? Right, because in Hebrew Yisro or Yitro, they usually translate as Jethro. So uh, we did go see Jethro Tull when they came to South Florida. Oh, I don't know, it was maybe eight years ago. And everybody always asks, "I would like to meet Jethro. Who? He must be the band leader. He must be the main singer, right? The guy who plays on one leg with his flute in his mouth." No, that's not Jethro Tull. That's just the name of their band. But I only mention that because this is. Parshat uh, Yitro, Jethro, Yisro, and it's the famous Torah portion of the Ten Commandments, which is pretty awesome. But that's what I wanted to talk to you about, okay? What, what is going on? Is it really the Ten Commandments? And the reason why I mention that is because there's a famous expression that in the Torah literature that says... Uh, mitzvah, which we usually translate as a commandment. Some people call it a good deed, but it actually comes from the Hebrew word of tzavta. Okay, it's the same root, tzavta, and that the word tzavta means connection, which is awesome if you think about it. It's a whole new way of looking at what are typically referred to as the commandments. They are unique methods for us being attached, for us feeling a connection, not just a connection to the one God who made us all, not just a, a connection to the creator of the whole universe, but we're talking a connection which connects us to our very core, to our very essence of who we are and what we're all about. So it's a whole different perspective than just saying the Ten Commandments. First of all, you know, as soon as somebody commands somebody to do something, right away you get this, like this Yetzirah or this kind of, this burning desire inside to do the opposite. So if you don't think that, that Hashem, that, you know, that God is smart enough not to know that, come on, give me a break. Right to know what human nature is, like I know if somebody tells me, "All right, I want you to sit there and listen and don't don't say anything." Well, I'm going to start whispering. I'm going to start talking, and my wife, God bless her, she knows if she wants me to do something, she usually tells me the opposite. Like, could you um? Don't worry, you don't have to take out the garbage now, so I'll take it out. If she says, "Could you take it out right now?" I'm like, eh, "Not right this second." Okay, I've gotten better. Okay, I've. I've really gotten better. You can teach an old dog new tricks. But so there is this concept of as soon as somebody tells you what to do, we get this thing inside of us like, huh, who are you to tell me what to do? I mean, I know what's good for me. I know what feels right. I know what sounds right. I appreciate your advice. But next time I want your advice, write it down, put it in the mail. And uh, drop me a letter 
and maybe I'll um, <laughs> maybe I'll read it sometime. So the what I think is a much more accurate perspective. I mean, we just arbitrarily have called the word mitzvahs commandments, but as in the Torah literature, it comes from the word safta, which means connection. So this is our way to to get connected, to feel connected. We even have a couple of visitors who came to this little shear. Thanks for coming, guys. We appreciate that. Hello, little guy, guys. You are the big guy, guys. Hello. Okay. I mean, look at it this way. The interesting thing is, it's not even known in Hebrew as the Ten Commandments. They're called in Hebrew, Aseras Adibros, which means the Ten Utterances, the Ten Messages that were spoken. The English has translated, and we have unfortunately adopted that as the Ten Commandments. I have more people in the shir right now. Thank you, little guys, for joining. So we see it right in Hebrew. It's called the Ten Utterances. What's the idea of speech? Speech is something that I don't need to talk to myself because unless, you know, you got some issues, of course, <laughs> and I'm not saying everybody does it, but when you do it all the time, you've got some issues, okay? And you don't really need speech to to function, to get by. It, it's how you really need speech to communicate with another person, to communicate with somebody else besides yourself, because you know what you want, you know what's inside, you know what you're feeling, you know what you're thinking. And so speech is a way to share what is basically something hidden and then you reveal it. And that that is what these 10 utterances are, Aseros Adibros, not the 10 commandments, but the 10 utterances where God is in this, is in this unique situation of communicating directly with with uh, humanity, with Moshe and all of Am Yisrael by Har Sinai, by Mount Sinai, and he's saying, okay, look at here, I'm giving you some guidelines, some guideposts of how to live a productive, meaningful, happy life. Okay? And they, again, in Hebrew, they're called the Aseras Adibros, the 10 utterances. So, what Hashem is telling us, look, if, if He wanted us just to obey, to sort of blindly obey, he, he could have made robots, He could have made the whole world, we're all like just these robots. But the unique thing about being a member of the, of the human species is that we have free choice. All right? We have free choice to do something good, something positive, or something negative. So nobody can ever really say, oh, I'll, I, I know I, I screwed up, but... Blame it on this one. Blame it on that one. Blame it on, you know, whatever. All these outside uh, influences. They're the ones who made me do it. Right? It wasn't me. No. We have to take responsibility for our own actions. And so this is a way of what was communicated to us uh, at this amazing experience at uh, Mount Sinai was this idea of... Hashem is telling us, okay, hey, I'm giving you some guideposts, and they're going to help you. Speaking of utterances, I say enough said. Ma'asahua ikar, action is the main thing. So let's connect with nature. All right, let's roll. Let's roll, let's roll. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, let's roll, let's roll. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Get out in nature, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. It's a white turn here. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over some gravel. Let's do a quick stop. Woo! All right. Peace out.